volunteers in Taiwan are promoting bone marrow donations throughout the month of September. And in Xiamen, China, we'll meet several care recipient households as volunteers make home visits. Welcome to Da Ai Headlines. I'm Duncan Dieth. Thank you for joining us. In South Africa, the Chief Albert John Luthuli Primary School was selected by the government as a local demonstration campus in Johannesburg. Although this school has the latest hardware and equipment, it hasn't seemed to change the impoverished situation of the students who come from mining families. This winter, South African Suji volunteers visited the school to distribute daily supplies and give a lecture to the children. During the lecture, a little girl surprised the school principal and volunteers by making a donation. Let's take a look. Students are walking on the wheelchair ramp. They are choosing the colorful chair to sit in class. The teacher is teaching with a digital whiteboard. My paper. House meals are offered during lunchtime. This is the Chief Elbers John Luthini Primary School, which is the only demonstration school in Johannesburg, South Africa. It seems to be a proud thing being able to enter this school, which was named after a Nobel Peace Prize winner. However, most of the 1,457 students at this school come from minor families living in slum areas. A group of volunteers who have long been devoting themselves to South Africa do not forget the neglected part of this country. We are volunteers. We are from the Taiwan City Foundation. And we're very happy to be at your school today. We have a very beautiful, beautiful school. While volunteers and the school's principal were explaining how Tsuji started its mission from the Bamboo Coin Bank to become a global non-profit organization, a little girl did something which caused them to interrupt their speech. This was a surprise action at this ceremony as children are now carrying out good deeds, such as making these little contributions. I would like to say thank you very much from the Chinchu Foundation and the government of Taiwan, not forgetting them. It was wonderful. Thank you very, very, very much. Tsuji not only gave us aid supplies to the students, but has also well educated them about the importance of helping the less fortunate. After this distribution event, these children have learned how to carry out the acts of giving. In early July, Typhoon Nepartek brought devastation to many villages in Fujian's Minxin County. Therefore, Tsuji volunteers prepared for a winter aid distribution earlier than usual this year. They spent two days visiting a total of 24 villages, going door to door to provide spiritual support and assess the needs of the local residents. The care and concern from Tsuji have given disaster victims more confidence as they rebuild their homes and their lives. To prepare for an upcoming winter aid distribution in Fujian's Mingqing County, Tsuji volunteers visited a total of 24 villages in two days. Ruins caused by July's Typhoon Naparta can still be seen everywhere in the Jiayang village. Su Chuanjiang's wife and house were swept away by the floods. Volunteers have come to comfort and encourage him since he has felt depressed and helpless over the past two months. Mrs. Liu lives in Shouhuan village. Her kitchen was severely destroyed by the flood. She was deeply touched by the care and compassion of Zhiji volunteers. After Typhoon Nepartek devastated the area, Zhiji volunteers continue to care for the affected residents of Mingqing County. Many elderly people are deeply touched and impressed by their dedication.
。上次我们一个师姐说，你就要把我们当自己的孩子，记得吗？记得记得记得，我们要记得记得记得练得到练得到练得到。Seeing you coming here to care for me makes me as happy as seeing my son. I feel even happier because you came far away to care for me. Most affected residents of Mingqing County are currently busy restoring their homes. Volunteers visit them and bring care to them, hoping to give them more positive energy. After Ziji volunteers assess their needs and listen to them, these affected residents have received warmth and love, and can be more confident to rebuild their homes as well as create a better future for themselves. The third Saturday of every September is World Marrow Donor Day. Worldwide, Tsuji Bone Marrow and Stem Cell Registry has over 25 million people willing to be donors who have joined from all over the world. In Taiwan alone, the Buddhist Tsuji Stem Cell Center has a registry of over 400,000 potential donors and has successfully matched over 4,400 cases of patients in need with compatible donors. Now, we'll see how stem cell donors are saving lives, and we'll even meet one couple who met as a result of a registry drive and went on to get married and have a family. I never thought that after I had joined the registry that I would be so fortunate in my own life. It was thanks to you all that I met my husband and have the life and family I do now. It was because of the bone marrow registry drive that Mrs. Chun met her husband, and they have since had two lovely children, all thanks to their auspicious first meeting. It was back when I was still studying, my classmates asked me to join them for a blood test. It was a long time ago that I joined the registry, probably about 13 years ago. After joining the registry 13 years ago, this donor's marrow recently found its match. Now everyone is here promoting bone marrow donations as one big family. Wearing white vests, over 100 donors who have joined the registry have come to act as volunteers to spread the message. The third Saturday of every September is World Marrow Donor Day. For the entire month of September, Tsuji will be holding activities to promote bone marrow donations, showing respect to every donor. Saving lives is our priority. That's what this work is about. I also decided to join the registry. I had surgery planned for today, and I told the doctor to reschedule so I could come here. The Buddhist Tsuji Stem Cell Center has been in operation for almost 23 years and has successfully matched 4,400 patients in need of transplants with suitable donors. Every day we have one donor coming in, so we average about 360 new stem cell donations a year. Given Taiwan's population density, the number of donors here is quite high. We really hope that we can deliver the message to all of society and make sure everyone understands the significance of the bone marrow and stem cell registry. With a donation of only 10 cc's of blood, you can join the registry. You can help Tsuji spread the message about bone marrow donation, and you might also be able to save a life. This year, the World Marrow Donor Day will fall on Saturday, September 17th. In Zhanghua County, local volunteers are holding special events to honor donors, one in front of the Zhanghua City Council Building and others in Yuanlin City and Lugang Township. In September, volunteers are hoping to spread awareness about how bone marrow and stem cell donations can save lives. Let's check out some of the activities. Volunteers are on the march and raising their voices to encourage residents to donate a blood sample to the registry. Many in Taiwan fear that donating marrow will be harmful to their physical health, but these volunteers are dispelling that notion here in Zhanghua County. After over 20 years of Tsuji's registry in Taiwan, this is the first such donation drive event being held in Changhua's Baguashan area. As of now, we have over 800 people we reached out to that agreed to donate, and that was the first event in Zhanghua. At another site, Yuanlin City's train station, former patients have gathered with Tsuji volunteers and donors to pay respect to marrow donors with flowers and thank them for their life-saving decision. <laughs> I want to thank Tsuji for establishing the stem cell center. 
It was only thanks to them that I was able to find a match out of the vast number of people out there. Tsuji volunteers organized an energetic dance performance in the hall of the train station to spread awareness and encourage people to join the registry. The dance attracts the attention of passersby. With volunteers from Changhua City, Yuanlin City, and Lukang Township, in total, over 1,000 people have signed up to donate a blood sample thanks to the day's activities of honoring donors and encouraging others to join the registry. In a procession of 62 bikes, volunteers symbolically move forward with their message and mission of spreading love and saving lives. How does someone decide when is an appropriate time to end a life? As we come to the end of this series, we interview the writer and film director Wu Nian Zhen and actor Sun Yue to understand their views on this subject. Wu grew up as the son of a minor and became familiar with people in his community crossing the line between life and death. His upbringing inspired much of his work. Sun Yue is also not afraid of facing such a serious topic. He has dedicated the last 20 years of his life to public service ads promoting a living will which conveys an individual's desired medical care at the end of life, ensuring dignity all the way to the end. This beautiful ocean view and the silver grass swaying in the wind is one of the attractions which make Raifeng a popular tourist area. This is Wu Nianzhen's hometown, where he documented the thin line between life and death in an area which has been known as a city of sadness. I've often thought about the end of life because I grew up in a mining community and death was a common occurrence. We usually cannot predict death or say goodbye. I had an uncle who I saw in the morning and said hi to me and patted me on the head. But in the afternoon, he was carried out of the mine. He was dead. He understood that life and death is a delicate balance which needs to be dealt with delicately, requiring a pre-established living will. I have long thought about giving up resuscitation at the end. I think that you should have discussions with those people close to you. And when you face life and death, even at the end, it should be your decision, which is part of being a responsible person. While he is able to calmly discuss this, the subject of life and death still involves a frank discussion between father and son. I can understand this, but there's also a very formal procedure to follow. It's like this is a father telling a son something, but you still need to take other action. I think that at this time, you need to listen to him as if you were a friend because it's his life and we need to respect what he wants to do at the end. Working together with his son, he still believes one song best represents his feelings about death. This song became stuck in my head and in some situations people tell me just to write an essay but you don't know what to write or what type of farewell to give. Wu has spent nearly his whole life on the stage, and now he is looking for the best possible ending to his own life. This public service ad stars Sun Yue, who has performed many roles, though here he is discussing the end of life. Every time I talk about death, I am trying to break myth and tell people that they will all eventually die. Sun has not shied away from the difficult issue of death, as he implores everyone to discuss this. 
I encourage a lot of friends to have a living will before death, so they can cause less troubles to those left behind. In the final part of our life, we can have a very good ending. Despite his advanced age, Sun Yue enthusiastically supports a living will program that he helped draft. I'm very grateful, as how can a sick old man face every day with gusto? I really hope that everyone, even poor people, can enjoy hospice care, as this is an issue of social equality. Everyone should have the right to hospice care, as long as you plan in advance and carry out a living will, leaving loved ones with instructions how to carry out your final wishes and leave them with no regrets, which is the very best farewell in life. Next, we'll tag along with some volunteers in Xiamen, Fujian, as they visit some care recipients ahead of the Mid-Autumn Festival. We'll meet several different care recipients, including a paralyzed man and his mother, a blind grandmother, a mentally disabled girl and her grandparents, as well as a grandmother taking care of her granddaughter and daughter-in-law. Let's see how Tsuji is spreading love and care in these residents' lives. Grandmother Ke's son works in a different region to make money for the family. This grandmother is raising her granddaughter as well as taking care of her son's wife, who suffers from mild mental disabilities. The household has been a care recipient family with Tsuji for three years. Since Tsuji has come into my life, I have become more upbeat. I was much more quiet in junior high and would only say a few words a day with my friends. Volunteers in Xiamen, Fujian have been visiting care recipient homes ahead of the Mid-Autumn Festival. At the home of an 83-year-old grandmother who is blind, they bring some oatmeal as a gift and sing some songs to spread some cheer. Next, volunteers arrive at the home of Ke Fuji and his mother. The mother is much happier recently thanks to her son's improvement. Two years ago, he was in an automobile accident and his legs were paralyzed. Thanks to the encouragement of Tsuji volunteers, Mr. Ke found the strength to continue his therapy and has been making good progress. Uh, Next, the volunteers visit the home of 20-year-old Lin Yuyun, who was born with a brain edema and who is being raised by her grandparents. Every time volunteers visit, they play a counting game together. They also count out money donated in the family's bamboo coin bank. Although these families all suffered hardship, thanks to Tsuji's love and care, they have rediscovered a joy for life. Tsuji wishes them all a wonderful mid-autumn festival. In traditional Chinese culture, the seventh lunar month is a time for praying with offerings and burning joss paper. To spread awareness and right thought for the seventh lunar month, Tsuji Philippines chapter invited local Chinese people to attend a vegetarian fair. They also invited homeless people to attend this event, giving out aid supplies which could truly help those in need. In the Philippines, Chinese people are invited to attend this blessing ceremony. A group of the homeless people are also invited to join the event. They came in the early morning to wait for the volunteers to give out aid supplies. We no longer need to suffer from hunger because Tsuji offers us free vegetarian lunch boxes and it helps us a lot. It's really a great help to us. We are happy to receive the aid supplies from Tsuji. Different from traditional rituals in the seventh lunar month, when people usually pray with offerings and burn joss paper, Tsuji volunteers mobilize to help those truly in need. Because the homeless people have nowhere to stay, volunteers walk along the streets at night, looking for the needy and giving out supply vouchers. 
Because it rained heavily, we delayed giving out supply vouchers. We should have started the distribution between 8 to 9 p.m. However, it was not until 10 to 11 p.m. that we started this work. Some people dislike being disturbed during this time because they have fallen asleep. No matter what, all the Zuji volunteers are dedicated to assisting the less fortunate, also helping those who have lost direction in their lives to find their way. I saw some people crying with joy. I thank local volunteers for helping us find those truly in need. To help and to help us to locate those who really are in need. This woman, Amalita, who came from Bobo to have eye surgery in Manila, also had the chance to work with her mother to prepare 400 vegetarian lunch boxes for the homeless. I was happy to receive other people's help. The even happier thing is that I can also help the needy with those who help me. After receiving assistance from others, these people have learned to pass on this kindness to others who are in greater need, spreading warmth and love throughout the society. In 2015, two separate bushfires occurred in Adelaide, Australia. Tsuji quickly responded by providing aid to the community. Afterwards, three members of the Australia Parliament came to Taiwan in order to visit Tsuji's spiritual home, the Jingsa Abode in Hualien. In 2015, a bushfire in South Australia ravaged Sampson Flat in the Pinery, leaving a total of 165 persons affected and 115 houses severely damaged. Tsuji volunteers brought the victims a letter of consolation from Master Zheng Yan, which was deeply appreciated by many of the disaster survivors. We've just disappeared in such a short time and we were very low. We just didn't know that we would cope. And then lovely people like you got in touch with us and um, helped us and buoyed up our spirits and made us feel as if, yes, we can go on. <laughs> Residents also obtained relief funds used to buy seeds which they can nurture into trees to restore the ecology of the area. Parliament members from South Australia became aware of the good work of Zhiji due to this charitable work. Very impressed with the work that Zhiji has done in um, our state uh, at time of disaster and how uh, forthcoming and uh, generous Zhiji uh, uh, people have been and uh, I'm very, very grateful. Bushfires and we have great respect for the foundation and its work and we wanted to understand more about the philosophy behind the wonderful works of Sushi. This year, through a special arrangement, this delegation was able to visit Zhiji's spiritual home in Hualien at the Jingsa abode and meet with Dharma masters to learn more about Zhiji's philosophy. Um, all, uh, I like the teaching of Sushi. It's about um, giving uh, we live in uh, the world these days where people just tack and tack. So um, I like the way Suchi teach their disciple and their people about um, do more in giving back to other people. Wherever they're suffering, Suchi volunteers are willing to go. These three Australian parliamentarians are looking forward to undertaking even closer ties with Suchi in the future. After holding a free clinic in San Bernardino, California, Tsuji volunteers were preparing mooncakes for sale ahead of the Mid-Autumn Festival. The proceeds will go towards providing meals to those in need. We'll leave you with these images at the end of our program. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.